Chapter 4 Part 3 Theoretical Predictions of the Rescorla Wagner Model and Other Theories of Associative Learning. The Rescorla Wagner Model predicts the shape of a typical acquisition curve of a conditioned response. Let's consider the case where a light, the CS, is paired with food, the US. Before the first trial, there's no expectation about the light, the food, or anything. So there's a big change in expectation after the first trial. Imagine you walked up to a vending machine, then without you doing anything, a light comes on. Whether you've had previous experience with vending machines or not, you probably wouldn't expect anything else to happen. Now, if one of the items from that vending machine was released, you would probably be surprised and make note of those events, the light turning on and the food coming out. There's a big change in the associative strength of the light. It went from nothing to something. Sometime later, you walk up to the machine again and the light comes on again. If you get food again, you're almost certainly less surprised than you were the first time. You might even have expected it. All the same, you probably wouldn't be sure it was going to happen, and maybe you even wouldn't have been surprised if it didn't. Maybe the first time was just a fluke. When it happens again, it's less surprising, but still surprising. So the associative strength increases again, uh, but not as much. Excitatory conditioning is happening, but it's slowing down. Later still, the light comes on again. Past 35 times you've seen the light, the vending machine has produced a treat. By now, you're probably fairly confident that the same thing will happen this 36th time. According to rule one, excitatory conditioning will occur until the strength of your expectation matches the strength of the US. Let's call that 100. Uh, if the vending machine vends 100% of the time, the light comes on. According to rule four, the amount of excitatory conditioning that occurs on each subsequent trial will get smaller and smaller because the discrepancy between your expectation and the actual US is decreasing, uh, right? You're getting closer to the 100, uh, which is the strength of the US. Put those two rules together and you get the acquisition curve that is typical of classical conditioning. The Rescorla Wagner model readily explains the blocking effect. Suppose you walk up to the vending machine again and the light comes on again. This time, it's accompanied by a gentle beeping as well as followed by the presentation of a treat. In fact, the next 10 times you see the light, you also hear the beep. At this point, your expectation is that you'll get free food when you see the light. Your expectation matches what actually happens. So according to rule number three, no conditioning occurs and none does. The pre-existing light food association blocks the formation of a beep food formation. Now imagine that you're at the vending machine, the light comes on and nothing follows. You don't get any food, an extinction trial. The Rescorla Wagner model can account for this too. According to rule two, inhibitory conditioning will occur until the strength of your expectation matches the strength of the US, which is now zero. According to rule four, the amount of inhibitory conditioning that occurs on each subsequent extinction will get smaller and smaller because the discrepancy between your expectation and the actual US, now zero, is decreasing. Put them together, and this time you get an extinction curve. Now imagine that there are vending machines malfunctioning all over the Bay Area. In another workplace, a friend reports that they get free treats from a vending machine whenever the machine beeps. Curious, you ask your friend to film this. She does, and you watch the video carefully. On your friend's machine, the beeping is very loud. You can also see the light come on, but unlike in your vending machine, the, the bulb is very dim. You ask your friend whether the light always comes on with the beep. I don't know, she says. I've never really noticed. This is an example of rule five. More salient CSs will condition faster than less salient CSs. Uh, this is overshadowing. 
there are always lots of potential CSs in the environment, arguably an infinite amount. If the associative strength that accrued on each trial were divided evenly among all the CSs that were present, it would always take an infinitely long time for conditioning to occur. Finally, imagine a third vending machine where two of your friends work. One friend works the A shift, the other works the B shift. For a while, the vending machine gives free treats whenever a moderately bright light lights up or a moderately loud beep can be heard. Light trials and beep trials are randomly interspersed, and the A shift and B shift both get both types of trials equally often. At some point, the light and the beep start occurring at the same time before the vending machine produces free treats, but only for the A shift. During this period, the B shift never sees the light, never hears the beep, and unfortunately, they never get free treats either. Things change again. The CSs come back, but the US disappears. Some people on both shifts see the light, not followed by a treat, while others hear the beep again without the treat. Which rule of the Rescorla Wagner model does this situation relate to? And what does it predict will happen in this case? Rule number six states that if two or more CSs are presented together, the learner's expectation will be equal to their combined total strength. The A shift was exposed to the light and beep together during phase two. At first, they would have expected one treat on account of the light and treat. Mm. At first, they would have expected one treat on account of the light and one treat on account of the beep. Add those together, as Rule 6 says you should do, and the expected value of the combined uh, stimuli is two treats. When the vending machine only produced one treat in the presence of the compound light beep CS, the actual U.S. was weaker by half than the expected U.S. So according to Rule 2, inhibitory conditioning would then weaken the conditioned response to the light and the conditioned response to the tone because they're both occurring. The B shift had no such experience in Phase 2, so their conditioned responses to both CSs should be as strong as ever. Indeed, in lots of experimental research using similar procedures, there is a larger conditioned response for the control group, the B shift, than for the over expectation group, the A shift. Be prepared to discuss other theories of associative learning in class.